You know, they say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That seems pleasant enough. I'm not sure what a book a day keeps away, but fortunately, I'll never have to find out. It's time once again to open up the monthly Nightworms package for this month, April of 2023. For those of you who might not know, Nightworms is the horror book subscription service. Every month they send me one of these wonderful little care packages filled with literary horror goodness. And every month I open them up here on this channel, see what's inside, and discuss for y'all. I can tell this is a rather thick package. Nice, something big inside of it. Of course, I can feel the books inside as well. There are always two books, or at least usually two books. Every once in a while, I think once there was a third book inside, which was a nice surprise, but usually there are two books. And as I said, I open them up and discuss while y'all can watch and be jealous of whatever I've gotten. As I open this up, carefully so as to not damage the book that I already see peeking out the, the top here. Let me just remind you to be sure to like this video, share it with a friend, subscribe and ring that notification bell, leave me a comment, and do all those wonderful, horrible YouTube things that I always have to ask you to do to help grow this channel so I can keep making these videos. I do have a lot of wonderful things planned for the near future. You're not going to want to miss out. Anyway, our business today is the books and whatever other little goodies have come inside of this, so let's get right to it. The first book to come out, I can tell, is a hardcover, and that is Lone Women by Victor Laval. This is a book that uh, I haven't read yet. It's a new book. I am aware of it. I have uh, seen some reviews and some discussion, and I'd heard about it when it was announced. Victor Laval is becoming a fairly well-known writer in the genre, very well respected. This is his newest one. I believe it's something of a western, which is not his usual setting or his usual subgenre. But let's go ahead and read the description on the flap so we can see what we're in for with Lone Women. It says, a woman with a past, a mysterious trunk, a town on the edge of nowhere, and a bracing new vision of the American West from the award-winning author of The Changeling. Adelaide Henry carries an enormous steamer trunk with her wherever she goes. It's locked at all times, because when the trunk opens, people around Adelaide start to disappear. Hmm. Seems like maybe there's something evil in this trunk. Let's read on and find out. It says, The year is 1915, and Adelaide is in trouble. Her secret sin killed her parents, forcing her to flee California in a hellfire rush and make her way to Montana as a homesteader. Dragging the trunk with her at every stop, she will become one of the lone women taking advantage of the government's offer of free land for those who can tame it. Except that Adelaide isn't alone, and the secret she's tried so desperately to lock away might be the only thing that will help her survive the harsh territory. Crafted by a modern master of magical suspense, Lone Women blends shimmering prose, an unforgettable cast of adventurers who find horror and sisterhood in a brutal landscape, and a portrait of early 20th century America like you've never seen. And at its heart is the gripping story of a woman desperate to bury her past or redeem it. So, yes, it is uh, something of a Western. There's apparently some thing locked in this trunk, some secret thing that presumably is sort of the MacGuffin that drives the whole plot. It sounds very interesting. I've said several times recently, noticing not just this book, but some other books and some other films, it seems that horror westerns have always been with us. It's always been one of our subgenres. It's always been blended, uh, the western and the horror genre. But it seems we're entering something of a new renaissance of horror westerns. It seems like a lot of people are thinking about horror westerns these days, and I'm all for it. Westerns are not always my favorite genre, of course. I tend to go for the spooky stuff, but when you can put the spooky stuff in the western setting, I think they uh, blend well together, and I think the western setting lends itself well to a horror story, so I'm looking forward to trying Lone Women. 
Next up, the other book is a paperback, and that is called Such Pretty Flowers by K.L. Sarah. This is a book and an author I don't know much about. I've never read this author. I have seen a little bit of chatter about the book around the interwebs, but I don't really know much about it. So, as we do, let's read the description and see what we're in for with this one. The description says, A woman investigating her brother's apparent suicide finds herself falling for her prime suspect, his darkly mysterious girlfriend. It carries on to say, quote, Get it out of me. It was the last message Holly received from her brother, Dane, before he was found cleaved open in his girlfriend's lavish Savannah townhouse. Police ruled his death a suicide sparked by psychosis. But Holly can't shake the idea that something else must have happened. Something involving another message he sent earlier that night about a game his girlfriend Mara wanted to play. That sounds rather, well, either fairly exciting or fairly ominous when someone wants to play a mysterious game. Could go either way, and in this case, seems like it went the ominous direction. Carrying on, it says, Determined to discover the truth, Holly begins to stalk Mara, a magnetic black-eyed florist with a penchant for carnivorous plants. I like her already. I don't have any in my garden at the moment. I'm growing herbs in my little hydroponic garden in the kitchen, but I have in the past grown a collection of carnivorous plants. I'm fascinated by them. Anyway, it carries on to say, but what begins as an investigation quickly veers into a fixation that lures Holly into the depths of Mara's world. Savannah, high society, eerie black roses, and a whisper of something more sinister. Soon, Holly is feeling a dark attraction to the one woman she shouldn't trust. As Holly falls deeper for Mara and her secrets, she's left with a dire choice. Find out what happened to Dane, or meet the same fate. That sounds quite intriguing. My little running commentary while I was discussing it aside, I doubt that carnivorous plants have much to do with the story. It's just an interesting thing that I happen to like. But that aside, this does sound like the kind of story that I like. Of course, I love uh, supernatural ghosts, zombies, vampires. Those kinds of stories are wonderful. But I also very much like these kinds of psychological horror stories where it's all about who we can or can't trust and recognizing that there's a rather horrific mystery buried within the human heart because we all have a dark side and you never quite know when that dark side might come out or in this case what might have happened to this brother or this mysterious girlfriend so it seems like some mystery going on uh some presumably psychological horror. Sounds right up my alley. Very much looking forward to trying this book, Such Pretty Flowers by K.L. Sarah. But of course we're not done. There is something in here that made this a fairly large, larger than usual package. And of course there's always a little goodie package inside. So let's see what that might be for this month. The first thing is this. It's called Beetle Brew says Haunted Cups Coffee. That's the, the company is Haunted Cups Coffee. It says it's our signature roast with the most. The flavor notes say uh, fruity, light acidity. It's a, uh, it's a coffee and it's called Beetle Brew. So it combines two of my very favorite things in the world, insects and coffee. Can't get enough of either one. Very much looking forward to brewing up a pot of this, perhaps while I read one of these books. So that's a wonderful thing to get in the package and a larger uh, sample of this coffee than usual. A lot of times there's a little sampler of something, but this is a nice goodly amount of coffee. So very generous this month and I'm quite appreciative of that. But of course we're still not done. There's the little pouch with all of the flat goodies that will conclude the package. So let's get right into that. Inside of this, the first item to come out is the little flyer that tells us everything that's supposed to be in the package. I'll put that to the side for a moment. Next up is the bookmark. There's always a bookmark. The theme this month is family secrets. So this bookmark says, appropriately enough, family secrets. And I will put this 
along with my collection of all of the other Nightworms bookmarks. I've joked in the past that I collect bookmarks but end up using anything but bookmarks to mark my page, but I've been getting enough of these every month now that I've actually been using them, so that's nice to have for my little collection of bookmarks. I don't know why I collect bookmarks, but I do. But also functional, they are getting some use. Anyway, the next item to come out is a signed book plate. I struggle a little bit to make this out, but I'm thinking this probably is Victor Laval. I think this belongs to Lone Women. I'll, I'll verify the signature in a moment, but tentatively I'll put it in there because I think that's where it belongs. The next item is, ah, another signed book plate. And I can tell this one belongs to K.L. Sarah, so my initial suspicion was correct. And I will put this one with such pretty flowers. I'll stick those into the books later. That's a wonderful thing. I collect autographed books. And though a book plate is never quite as nice as a book that's signed actually in the book, it's almost as good, and I like that they always have at least one, and in this case, sometimes two, of those signed book plates. So I'm building my collection not only of wonderful reading material with these two books, but also my collection of autographed books. My library is taking over my house, and that's the way I like it. But we're still not done. There's some more stuff in here. The next item to come out is what feels like a fridge magnet. It is a fridge magnet. And it's an interesting one. We have these two, I'm not quite sure how well you can see it, but we have these two humanoid figures with sort of long arms, so I'm not sure if they're meant to be ghosts or just stylized people. But in the background we have an antlered, red-eyed beast of some sort, maybe a windigo or some kind of forest monster. In any case, I like a good fridge magnet. I've got a filing cabinet where I tend to affix these sorts of things, so that's nice little tiny little piece of home decor and we're still not done the next item and i believe the last yes indeed the last item is this sticker it looks like it kind of goes along with this um such pretty flowers we have a skull with some flowers i don't know if they're meant to be uh just stuck into it or if they're meant to be growing out of it either way a skull with some flowers very nice design they always seem to throw a sticker into one of these and for people who collect stickers, they are always very nice designs. So anyway, that concludes our video for today. I've got some wonderful reading material and some wonderful drinking material. I don't know if I'm going to get to these books this month. Maybe this month, maybe next month. I'll get to them eventually. Whether I get to them this month or not, do be sure to stay tuned as I, around the end of the month or the beginning of the next month, discuss all of the books I've been reading over the past month. So you'll get some book reviews coming soon. But until then, as always, take care and stay scared.